Most awaited the midnight concert at the American Fantasy, Takando, February 22, the Nunela Resort, Takanla concert to Lolise. It will be pretty living now, Life Now events, concert law organizers, Kanbra Aji, Hotel Saramati, Timapur, the actor press conference, Trakishi. Details some. Uh, so today we call this press conference to um, you know, announce the artists that uh, we are planning for the 22nd of February, which is uh, coming Thursday. And uh, the artist is called The Midnight. Uh, it's a retro synthwave uh, band from US. So uh, Dimapur, uh, I mean Naglan was very lucky to uh, you know, have the participation of The Midnight and um, you know that they agreed to have this place as one of their tour leg of the tour so apart from dimapur uh, they played in um, they played one festival last night uh, and then uh, after that they'll be performing in mizoram on the 20th after that Bangalore. Dimop Bangalore. Bangalore. after that uh, they'll be performing mizoram on the 20th and 22nd is uh, dimapur and 24th is uh, shillong i mean uh, meghalaya so these are the dates that that's been allocated for the northeast and uh, generally India as well. We have a you know couple of partners. Uh, the event will be in Nune Resort. Uh, we have also we have Naglan's uh, finest bands, you know, supporting the event by opening for the band. Uh, we have Trans Effect and we have Tune Up Channel from Mokchong. Plus, we have a you know a music producer and a DJ from Delhi also, DJ Nida, supporting the event. Yeah. And uh, Baki, everything else, uh, you know, all the details that you require, everything is there, print printed out. We'll provide it to you as well, so that uh, you don't have to waste too much time writing down stuff. Yeah, so tickets have been selling online. Skillbox is our online ticketing partner. Skillbox, Skillbox. and uh, plus uh, they are also our event partner. And uh, we also have our local uh, ticket selling platform called the uh, My TV Show. So My TV Show is slightly lesser in terms of uh, the ticket pricing because uh, taxes and processing fees are lesser here. So the skill box is uh, selling for about what? 2800 My TV Show is a little lesser than that. And plus we have launched uniform. ticket yeah. only one category. 2800 Actually it's 2400 but after all the processing and the you know the GST and everything online, it becomes 2800. On my TV show, the Nagaland platform which is selling, uh, it's a little lesser than the skill box. Voila. And offline tickets are available all, all, all over Nagaland. It's even available in Assam also. And it's uh, selling okay. Yeah. Hopefully after today's interview, tomorrow it'll be all sold out because you guys will write a very good review of the <laughs> event. Uh, so the venue only has a capacity of about 3,000, 3,500 crowd. And also, uh, you know, the package that we got from the artist is for a uh, three to 4,000 crowd capacity uh, performance. Yeah, they have several packages. They have festival packages. Did they have three to 4,000. Yeah, three to 4,000, yes. So since, uh, you know, we have no segregation in the ticket pricing, we have only one category. There will also be another elevated loft, but that's for our sponsors, our well-wishers and patrons and stuff like that. So that's a different category, but only one category. So whoever comes first to the event venue on the event day will get to have the best seat in the house. How yeah. do you expect to they don't charge us. There are also several ways in which uh, an artist gets sold to a certain venue. So the Indian promoter buys the overall package for India. Nah. So irrespective of what uh, uh, the artist is asking them, they will just ask them for India as a package and then the promoter will sell to different locations if we qualify uh, and if we f uh, if they find us capable of executing a concert for them live concert for them so it's not like it's still a lot of money or well, hopefully like we have the support of some local most of our local vendors and you know even partners uh, like for example in an event we spend a lot of money on making uh, setting up the technical production aspect of the venue. So there, what we are doing is we are partnering up with all the local partners and they are not giving us cash, but they are giving us their service, their expertise, as well as their raw materials. And in return, we are also giving them something, some sort of exposure, some participation in the event. Nah? 
visibility in our type. Though. So that's how we are at least making up some money. And ticket pricing, though, of course, if everything goes according to thing, then maybe we can at least reach 60 or 70 percent of the costing from the ticket pricing. Yeah, we'll have around 15 or 16 stalls. We have had um, an online, uh, you know, this thing calling stalls to for participation. We had a lot of inquiries from a lot of stalls, but since the space is limited, we are uh, allocating space only for 15 stalls. So it's all curated by one of our, again, one of our stall experts is there. So these people have all shortlisted the different, different kinds of stalls that will cater to yeah, the crowd. Unfortunately for us, it's showing a little bit of rain on that day, on the 22nd. So a lot of our production aspect will be dependent on the weather. You know? But uh, we have a schedule set in place, irrespective of whatever happens. And also, we're going to make sure that the event venue is rainproof, like at least a little bit of waterproof. Na? In so uh, we hope to open the festival gates by at least by 5 p.m. and have uh, support X uh, starting by at least by 6 o'clock. And like I said, whoever comes first will get the best seat or the best view in the house because there is no segregation. For now, we hope that it'll be available if it doesn't get sold out because like we said, it's not a 10,000 capacity venue. It's only three, 4,000. So if it gets sold out, then we'll, we'll announce one day prior. We want to do that also, <laughs> like at least one show in Nagalin, which is sold out, you know. But yeah, hopefully everything. Uh, if definitely it should be available at the venue. Yes. Are they big here as a name? In Nagalin, we have had amazing response from people because now uh, how the dynamics of music has has shifted is music in itself, in its entirety, as an artist, it cannot sell anymore. So music, though, what we see more is like the trending music is Instagram, for example. Whatever is trending on reels is the music that trends nowadays. So I think um, Midnight has got like, you know, a lot of fan following in Nagaland. We did our share of research as well. Of course, in Nagaland it's like that also because it's a very small community. Whenever anyone does a very big concert, it's visible to the entire Nagaland population. So rock fans, can brother, they would say like, why bringing only this one? You know, why not bring rock fans? When we do rock music, then they'll say, why doing only rock music? Why not bring this one, you know? They're on iTunes, they're on Spotify. We'll, we'll give you their entire this thing later printed out. We want to have more, but uh, the thing is, everything, since the show is, headliner is midnight, uh, so you know, we have to go according to their schedule as well, a little bit. So what time they'll come on? Uh, they might come on around 8 o'clock. That's the that's thing. They, they are doing a 90 minute set. Yeah. They performed 90 minute last night in Bangalore as well. They are actually, you know, a, a band that always sells out all of their venues wherever they play, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, from my uh, research of their social media feed, like, I think almost all their, they have a European and Australian tour coming up as well. Even those are all almost sold out. Tickets, very few limited left in your type of it. Plus, they're bringing their own merchandise store as well. So if people want to buy their, you know, exclusive caps or tote bags or t-shirts or hoodies. It'll be all available at the venue. Nowadays, the world has become such that, you know, um, for example, if an American band comes, then uh, they want to stay in a seven-star hotel, five-star hotel for, for that matter. Uh, they come with certain pieces of equipment which is not available in India. So which means they'll have to fl fly in on their own jets. Nah. So in your hotel, the infrastructure, not just the technical infrastructure, but the infrastructure of the place matters a lot. So those are some of the challenges that we face. In, in fact, I think now Cherry Blossom is one of the biggest, I mean, leading festivals in Northeast, mm -hmm. at least in terms of bringing big artists from outside. Because last year we have seen them doing uh, Neo, we have seen them doing Ronan Kidding, and these artists are not easy at all to do. It's not just about having money. Even if you pay them 10 crores also, if they come and they don't find the equipments that they require, if they don't have the hotels that they require, they will never come here. So there are certain infrastructural requirements from the places that they go to perform also. So yeah, and also of course, again, the fan following, how our fans treat them in response, na? that also matters a lot. So we are just one small element in the whole, even, uh, you know, artists coming here. Everyone needs to pitch in with their parts.